So you went out and bought an E46 M3, didn't you, Chris? Why in the hell did you do something stupid like that? Well, maybe it wasn't so stupid. Keep watching to find out. Okay, boys and girls, why in the hell did I just buy an E46 M3? Well, to answer that question, I guess I could just say, well, why the hell not? I mean, it's a cool car. I wanted it. I bought it. Screw it. That's the end of the story. Um, but it's never quite that easy. It's never quite that simple. So here's sort of the really long-winded backstory to, to the full story. Okay, let's start with this. There are certain cars that sort of check my boxes, and I'm surrounded by a, a couple of them here. Um, whether it's like aesthetics or pedigree or performance or prominence, or it could be even price, really. I mean, there's only a handful of cars out there that I'd say really call out to me as cars that kind of get on my bucket list. And uh, the E46 M3 is definitely one of those cars. Um, first of all, the E46 was really a huge leap forward in design and performance for the M3 itself. Um, if you look at the first generation M3s, in, in all honesty, they were really kind of underpowered and a bit slow for what they were. They had a uh, similar vintage 944 Turbo um, as those E30 M3s, and that car would pretty much walk the dog against one of those M3s on any road course you, you threw at it. It was faster, it was better handling, just as comfortable, just as reliable. It was really good on gas. Um, and when I bought it in the late 90s, it wasn't really any more expensive than an E30 M3. So I was looking at both cars at the time, so it was really a no-brainer for me to pick the 944 Turbo. Um, I was just getting more car for the money. Now, obviously, if I knew then what I know now, the better investment would have definitely been the E30 M3, but uh, I never really bought that Porsche thinking it would appreciate in value. I didn't buy it as an investment, uh, though I did, I did eventually sell it for a couple thousand dollars more and I paid for it, so I did okay on it, but I would have done a lot better on an E30 M3, no doubt. Uh, so, the, so now we go to the E36, and that was another significant step up from the E30, but again, 240 horses at that time, really not all that much. I mean, late model 944 Turbo S's and 968's had that power. So the M3 kind of kept taking a back seat to those other options I was looking at. And I mean, I realize it's not quite apples and apples comparisons here between the M3 and those Porsches, but I mean, they were still competing on price and performance in a lot of ways and c competing for the same buyer and the same dollars. So I think it's somewhat of a fair comparison, at least put them in the same sentence. So when the E46 M3 showed up, I mean, that was just a, that was a huge leap forward now. Okay, more than just significant. That really changed the pond in which the M3 was now swimming in. Horsepower was now up to 333, which is like a 40% increase on the E36. I mean, 40% in one model cycle is huge. You rarely see that in cars today. So now it has the power to compete with the big boys. It's got better handling, the interior, the quality, the fit and finish is greatly improved. So now the M3 is kind of the car I always thought the M3 should have been from the beginning, which is a really powerful, beautiful, understated, refined type of a car, kind of an Autobahn car, yet really it's got a bit of a hooligan in it when you want to push it. And so um, that was kind of the car I was looking for. And as it turns out, the E46 was the last inline six M3, which is kind of a shame because BMWs and six cylinders, those are like beer and pretzels, man. I mean, they just go together. And in some ways too, um, the E46 was kind of the last mechanical M3. Uh, the newer cars, I mean, they're brilliant cars, but a little too complex for me. Electronics, you know, the iDrive, the Nanny Aids, bigger, heavier, all that stuff. The aesthetics, not really to my liking. They're okay. Um, but the E46 was checking all my boxes. So not that those other M3s aren't great cars. And if you own one, you're certainly a lucky guy or gal. But the M3 for the E46 was my sweet spot. So 
about three years ago, I started looking for an E46M car, but it really wasn't one of those things where I kind of made it to, you know, a point to look every day. I wasn't really in a hurry to get one. Uh, and that's a good thing because <laughs> since BMW built so many of them, I really wanted to wait and find a car that was different and stood out and wasn't like all the others, and I was kind of willing to wait to find that kind of a car. And so for me, the, the initial kind of a spec car that I was looking for was Phoenix Yellow Metallic, and pretty much every other color was a deal breaker, no questions asked. It was Phoenix Yellow Metallic or nothing. So to give you some context, they built about 43,000 M3s between 01 and 06, and only about 700 were Phoenix Yellow. So that's only about one and a half percent of all the M3s. So that's a really small pool of cars I'm targeting right off the top. And so to make it even more difficult, I wanted an 04 or 05 model only, which were the last two years the color uh, was officially offered. So uh, I wanted this late model M3 I could get in Phoenix Yellow because it was dropped um, in 05 and they didn't make any in 06 officially. Uh, Phoenix Yellow was one of the launch colors for the E46 M3 along with Laguna Seca Blue back in 01. So that color, if you look at most of the advertising and marketing at the time for this car, it was in one of those two colors. So that was kind of neat too. So that was kind of a draw for me as well. Um, and most of the Phoenix yellow cars were built early in the model cycle, like in 01 and 02. So by 2004 and 2005, very few people were ordering this, this color anymore. So we're probably talking maybe 100, 150 cars at the most were ordered in 04 and 05 uh, by the end of the model cycle. And I didn't know it at the time, but um, Phoenix Yellow fell so far out of favor actually by 05 that they dropped it in the middle of the cycle year. Um, but more than, that, more than that in a minute. Uh, so I was down to maybe 100 cars in my search for the kind of M3 that I wanted with the specs I wanted, but I only wanted a coupe, so Right there, you got to lump another 30 to 40% of the available cars off because they'd be Cabriolets. So that shaves the number down even further. So now we're down to maybe 60 or 80 cars, something like that. Uh, but then it, it gets narrower because I wanted a low mileage car. Um, and by low mileage, I mean something like under like 50,000 miles or something. I wanted a car that kind of lived Life is a second or third car in somebody's house, a weekend car only. So that shrunk the pool even further down. So from 68 to 80, I may be down to 30 to 50 cars that would check those boxes. And then spec-wise on the interior, I wanted a car with a black Napa leather only. I didn't want the, the gray interior. I wanted a car that was pretty much fully loaded, which gave you all the stuff you're familiar with, like the moon roof and the Harman Kardon stereo and the cold weather package that gives you heated seats and stuff and the xenon headlights. So cars without that stuff um, were weeded out as well. So even to make it just more ridiculous and stupefying, I also wanted a manual tranny if I could find it. So you know, half the cars or close to half came with SMG. So if I took this exercise down to kind of the very last nut, we're talking maybe 10 or 20 cars at any given time that or in North America, that might be what I'm looking for. And probably most of them are not up for sale anyways. So I had to be patient. Patience was key. And really, it took the better part of three years in order to get to where I am today. And so I wouldn't check eBay or Auto Trader or anything like that um, every day. But when I had some downtime, maybe once or twice a month, I'd Google the internet and uh, look on the M3 forums and see if I could find any Phoenix yellow cars that were for sale and see what was out there. And then from that initial pool, I'd start weeding the cars down. And the cars would pop up from time to time, um, but they always had a, like a non-negotiable deal breaker on them. They were you know, either cosmetic failures or they had wear and tear issues, wrong years, high miles, convertibles, you know, maybe a poor maintenance history or they were way modified or something like that that I didn't want. There was always a catch to them, and in most cases, there were three or four catches to them, so I really wasn't even getting close to what I was looking for. And it was getting discouraging. I wasn't sure if I was gonna find um, the right car for me. Uh, a lot of car guys will tell you though, you know, if you keep looking, you look long enough, 
the car you're looking for, you won't necessarily find it. It will kind of find you oftentimes when you least ex expect it. And that's kind of what happened in November. Um, I was on eBay Motors, just kind of farting around, killing time. And I don't even think I was looking at BMWs, actually. I think I was looking at Porsches or... No, I take that back. I think I might have been looking at um, 5 Series iX wagons, uh, which are really hard to find. They're really great cars. And I think I might have been looking for like a winter car or something. But in any case, at, at the bottom of one of those listings, there was those recommended listings that you see, and I saw a Phoenix Yellow car down there at the bottom. I thought, wow, God, be goddamn, there's a Phoenix Yellow M3. You don't see those a lot. Um, obviously, I'm going to click on it and see where it goes, but you know, I've been down this road before, mostly disappointing, so I really didn't think a whole lot about it when it clicked on it, and it was more of like a, just a, like a shits and giggles click. I mean, I'll click on it, and then you know, I'll weed it out, and I'll be you know, on my way. Uh, but when I clicked on the ad and I just started just reading the first couple of sentences, I thought, you know, holy shit, you know, this, you gotta be kidding me, this could lead somewhere. I mean, it was like for sale, 2005 E46 M3 Coupe, Phoenix yellow metallic, had black Nepo leather interior, moonroof, Xenons, cold weather, Harman Kardon, had navigation system, which I, that wasn't a requirement for me, but it's nice to have, parking sensors. BMW Assist, I mean, it was fully loaded. This car had everything. It even had black GTS kind of style rims and blacked out kidneys on it, which that was one thing I was going to do when I bought the, a, a car that I found no matter what. Um, so that was an extra bonus. But most, most of all, it had only 17,900 miles on it. I thought, holy shit. I've been looking at e, uh, E46 M3s for three years and, and even just the generic pool of M3s, all the cars for sale. Rarely cars came up with miles that low. I mean, no matter what color, no matter what condition, no matter what spec. So I just kind of had to take this all in for a second and say, okay, well, where's this going? Um, and, it, and the ad clearly said it was, you know, it was like a two owner car. The Carfax checked out, um, pampered from day one. And the photos seemed to indicate just the same. So it was obviously a car that was the subject of somebody's affection. So that was great. But it wasn't a manual. Ah, uh, fuck me. Fuck my life. Well, let me preface what I'm about to say by saying every sports car I've ever owned, yeah, every one I've ever owned has been a manual tranny. I love manuals. I love manual trannies. I live for manuals. I learned how to drive on a manual tranny. Learn how to drive on a 1988 Suzuki Samurai. If you can learn how to drive on that in a manual, you can drive anything. But I really spent less than five minutes convincing myself this was the car for me despite the SMG. And it really for a few reasons. Um, first, the car not only checked every other box on my checklist I was looking for, it just like hit them out of the park. And second, I mean, the pool of cars I was pursuing and I had to realize this. I mean, you could really, I mean, they could dance on the head of a needle. It was so small. So it could be another three years or five years or 10 years before I would cross paths with a car as close to this as what I wanted. And I mean, there'd be no guarantee even if I found that car at a later date that I might be in a position to afford it then or someone might even be selling it to me then. So, um, I had driven SMG cars before, and I, their reputation is somewhat underdeserved. Yeah, it's not a manual. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, but if you know how to drive, you drive it like a manual and not an auto, it can be a rewarding car to drive. And so all things considered, um, forgetting the manual tranny was really kind of a small concession to get everything else I wanted, because everything else I wanted was so damn hard to find to begin with. Um, and you know it means it's you know it's still it's just one of a handful of cars that can really lay down some pretty good specs. And if you know if I found the exact same car at a different time with the same specs, the same mileage, same condition, same model year, obviously the same color, um, you know, like I said, I I might not be in a position to afford it at that time. It might be five or six years later, or the person he may know what he has and may not want to sell it to me. So. Um, I just had to decide that, yeah, this is, this is the right time and this is the right car for me. Uh, a little bit more information about the car. 
Um, I dug up an online ad for it about, from about three years prior when it was sold in like 2012. And there were a bunch of pictures on that online ad. And so I was just tooling through it, looking through it to see what it was about. And, you know, thank God it didn't say something like, you know, salvage title, you know, dropped in Lake Michigan or something like that. Um, so everything checked out and that was good. But it was built in late 05 as Phoenix Yellow Metallic, even though Phoenix Yellow Metallic was dropped in early 05. So how the hell did that happen? Well, there were a few cars built after they dropped it in early 05 that were Phoenix Yellow, maybe 15 or 20. And that was that that encompassed all the the, the 05 Phoenix Yellow cars and all the 06 cars. So there's maybe 15 or 20. And it was a two thousand dollar surcharge if you wanted Phoenix Metallic, Phoenix Yellow Metallic, in about a three month wait to get it. So after they officially dropped the color, you could still get it. You just had to pay a premium for it. And so there were just a subset, small subset, subset, you know, subset, subset of cars. Um, that were BMW individual cars in Phoenix Yellow Metallic that were ordered, and this is one of them. And uh, I've actually talked to a couple uh, buddies of mine who are kind of BMW folks. They probably know more about BMWs than certainly I do, but even they were kind of stumped that you could order a, a BMW individual car in a factory color that was ordered that year, but it was special ordered. But this is one of those cars. Uh, so it's kind of a rare bird. Uh, it's not really the car you would probably ever find if you made an honest attempt to go look for it. But, you know, it's kind of a nice bonus to find out about it um, after I put a deposit down on the car. So um, sometimes you find, you know, you know, special nice bonuses when you least expect it. And that's kind of what happened here. So all things being equal, I mean, if there was a car out there that had the same specs, and it was a manual tranny, you know, I might die before I find it, so I'm not getting any younger, so that's why I decided to pull the trigger now. And I, I think it was, a, it was a good move on my part. And after the car was delivered, um, it was pretty much everything that I ex expected it would be and as, as it was advertised. So sometimes you just gotta know when to not be too greedy and just cash in your trips and kind of take the standing triple because sometimes that last one or two ounces or one or two percent of greediness can really kill you when you could have had a car that had 98 percent of what you want but then you pass on it now you have 100 percent of nothing so um, truth be told there are really there's not that many unicorns out there in the car world so there's always going to be a trade-off of some kind even if it's like just on the price so i've ordered some really really or not ordered but i bought some really cool cars and um Every one of them has an issue or two that, you know, isn't perfect for me, but, um, you know, you just learn to live with it. You learn to, uh, you know, enjoy the cars for what they are. And if, if they're 98% of what you want or 97%, you have to be happy with that. And so that's not too bad of a consolation prize, um, no matter what kind of tranny is in it, and in this case, an SMG. Uh, so that's the backstory. Uh, I'll... Uh, get you more information on the M3. I'll probably do some more videos on it and give you a walkthrough uh, with it in the next few weeks, maybe a few months. I got some other cars I'd like to show you, some other friends with some really cool cars I'd like to show you, along with some other subject matter as well. So if you like this kind of content, um, please subscribe. Please tell your friends about it. And uh, thanks for listening.